Early on in our journey, we found the Mentor's Ring, a very powerful ring for spellcasters. Later on, we came across the Ring of Surroundings, a ring treasured by thieves, and Shishev's Ring for the assassins out there. Recently, we acquired Sheagorath's Signet Ring and the Ring of Khajiit. That's only the beginning though, because today, we're adding three more amazing rings to our collection. All three of the targets today are constant effect rings with multiple enchantments each. They're all located in tombs and two of the three of them have no quests associated at all and are just waiting to be grabbed. The third has an optional mini quest for vampires only, but the end result is the same one way or the other, so we'll be taking the most direct route with that one. Unlike some of our more niche jewelry, these rings have broad applications and will be valuable to just about any character, especially early in the game, as at least two of them are easy to get your hands on whenever you want. Let's get straight into it with our first target, a series favorite, Denstagmer's Ring. Denstagmer and his ring are a bit of an enigma according to the last remained Dwemer and certified hefty boy Yagram Begarn, which I suppose means the writers already just had too much work to do writing the real Baron Zaya. Just say it's unknown, Todd. What we do know about the ring is that it is a tribute artifact. Much like the Mentor's ring, Denstagmer's ring is found with some named ashes, these belonging to a forum member known only as D. Bryant, who died during the development of Morrowind. The ring itself carries a constant effect triple enchantment, resisting fire, frost, and shock by 30 points each. It can be found in Fala's ancestral tomb, southeast of Nissa's, located on the shore just across the river. Inside, we'll find a relatively short dungeon with appropriate Daedra if you're past level 3, so head here early for a great freebie. From the entrance, head down and take the unlocked door on your left. In here, we'll encounter a leveled Daedra, like this little scamp. The hallway curves around to a lower chamber, with the trapped urn containing our prize sitting on an altar at the back of the room. Give it a good probing before you go sticking your fingers in there, and once it's safe, you'll have one of the best elemental resistance items in the game. I'm also going to bring D. Bryant with us to experience something other than a musty urn for a while. The only other treasure note in here is a copy of the athletic skill book, The 36 Lessons of Vivek, Sermon 1. So there's your summer reading list already started. The next ring on the list is the Ring of Finaster. We have way more information on this ring since it first appeared in the Elder Scrolls Arena. Finaster was one of the hero gods worshipped by the Old Mary, and he forged the ring to be one of the best protections around from magic users. He added a curse to the ring so that it would eventually leave any master other than himself, but we can keep it for a time. The Ring of Finaster carries another constant effect triple enchantment. Resist poison, shock, and magicka by 20%. Very useful for pretty much anyone concerned with fighting all sorts of spellcasters. The ring is located on the body of Pop J, another tribute memorial at the end of Sinem Ancestral Tomb just south of Dagon Fell in the Sheagorod region. The memorial honors the father of Morrowind developer Gary Noonan, who passed away during production. Okay, so this location is absolutely lousy with bone walkers. Be sure to bring plenty of restore potions if you can't resist or tank them. We need to make our way to the locked doors at the back of the tomb by sword, stealth, or magic, however you prefer, as long as it's in one piece. This location might be a little more difficult than some of the others, but Bone Boys aren't too tough if you take your time and fight them one-on-one. -on -one. As always, you want to avoid getting hit by their magic, but it doesn't seem like they're doing any permanent debuffs today. We need to head down this hallway and add the last walker to the bone pile, then we can get started on this door. Past the door, we'll have to deal with a few skeletons, but it's all just more bones. Speaking of bones, at the top of the altar, we'll find the bones of Pop J and the ring we're here for. Pop J got named Bones instead of Ashes, but that's okay, we'll bring him along too. Lastly, we have Marara's ring. Mine looks different from what you'll find unless you also use the unique Finery Replacer mod, link in the description. But appearance aside, the abilities are what we're really interested in. The ring is located just south of our current position, in the Drethan Ancestral Tomb, in the possession of a vampire named Marara. If you too are a vampire, you can speak to her and she'll ask you to kill her. We already got cured, but we can help her out anyway. It'll be our good deed for the day. The ring itself carries a very eclectic mix of enchantments. Three constant effects again, of course. This time we have Reflect 20 points, Fortify Acrobatics 10 points, and Resist Normal Weapons for a staggering 40 points. 
This one's pretty straightforward. Take out the bone boy. Open the door. Take out another bone boy. And get startled by the vampire. Not even trying. Swing wildly at her until she collapses and take the ring from her corpse. You can take her ashes too if you want. These rings are extremely good, but they aren't the most powerful in the game. We'll definitely be revisiting this category in the future and tracking down even more amazing rings to add to our collection. We release multiple videos every week, so if you want to be up to date on all of our adventures and antics, make like a scrib and thump that subscribe button. Until the next time, I've been Git Shiver, and I'll see you in the next one. Later!